on a day that many Canadians take time to reflect and appreciate past and present armed forces efforts, here in Swift Current there continues to be a very real connection to militant history. Swift Current's tie was born during the Second World War when the airport was turned into a Royal Air Force base that began operating in late 1941. A month before, or weeks before, uh, the U.S. were attacked at Pearl Harbor. Um, and so, I mean, it became, um, uh, you know, an important training base for, um, for Bomber Command um, through the course of the war up until it closed in the spring of 1943. The family of current owner Hildor Braun has something in common. They fled the political climate of Europe in 1925 that ended up leading to the hangars being built years later. My grandparents and them were well-to-do farmers in the okay. you know, big orchards and big, did a massive house and stuff. But one day, one night, they packed up and they left because it wasn't safe anymore. They came here, they had nothing. They brought some money, but it was worthless. Yeah. And so they started over, but they never regretted it. Director and curator of the Swift Current Museum, Lloyd Bagley, has spent considerable time studying the RFA history in the area and was impressed with the relationship between the community of Swift Current and the base while it was here. For the community itself, um, it provided jobs for uh, people in the community who served as non-commissioned officers and as enlisted people. Um, or in the RAF, uh, they received a commission, uh, but more importantly, they received employment. So those support staff in terms of uh, maintenance crews and um, drivers, that sort of thing, all were locally generated. And so lots of folks uh, found employment there. And then it became its own little community. Uh, it had sports fields uh, that had, there were, officers housing and then of course the H huts that the soldiers um, and training staff lived in. So uh, there were nine hangars at the air base and one remains today. Every, every concrete pad out here yeah. was another building. Okay. I think there's two more here Yeah. and then a few there Okay. and then there's also the one across. So. And uh, some became um, uh, apartment complexes. Some were used in, in other communities for storage. Uh, here in Swift Current, one is a gallery. The West Wing Gallery at, at uh, Kinetic Park is an H-hut from the Swift Current Airport or from number 39 Service Flying Training School. Others were sent elsewhere. Some remained um, and were torn down over the course of the last, the last 80 years or so. The last remaining hangar has passed through more than just the Bronze family hands, as before that several different airlines companies owned it, including what is known now as Air Canada. Uh, uh, two flights a day um, came through Swift Current, right? One going west and one going east. And this is of the 1950s. Okay. So Trans Canada Airways used the hangar. Um, there was a cafeteria of sorts, uh, that sort of thing. So how busy were they? I, I can't tell you. But uh, so they were in, the, they used the hangar as along with other flying clubs and flying services. Um, Mel Air was another one that no one's heard about. Smith Airways uh, was in there for a while as well. Currently the hangar is mostly used as a private storage for local flyers and boaters. But to give the building more of an authentic look, Braun hand milled all the windows to original specs just a few years ago. I put, I put in over a thousand panes of glass. Like these. The, I don't know if you can see on the end, yeah. the first cross bar has a little angle iron on the end, yeah. clip, and the third one, and then further up behind that ductwork, there's another one. Okay. The hangar is also designated as a municipal heritage property after Bagley and Braun spent lots of time on that application together. But Braun's ownership of the hangar may be coming to a close. I'm trying to phase out of here. Okay. I've restored as much as I hope to. And uh, I have to look for a, a way out. I've talked to concert. Well, I've talked to the city about it as a heritage. Well, it is a heritage building that way. 
provincially recognized yeah, yes, one, yes, I think, Lloyd yes, was telling us yesterday. Yeah, yeah, we did that uh, a number of years ago okay. together with Lloyd. Over the course of the past few years, museum and airport staff have helped salvage two planes from the arm of Swift Current that were used at the RFA base. The plan is to have them restored for a potential aviation museum inside the hangar. They've been donated uh, by local area uh, you know, residents of the RM and the Swift Current. And um, we've been working with the current owner in, in terms of uh, establishing an exhibition space uh, in, in, in the hangar. And, uh, but there needs, to, there needs to be some repair done before we can begin building a cocoon that would house the collection. So we have done a series of archaeology, uh, mostly test sites. Um, our plan this year was to go ahead and do public archaeology, but with the pandemic, um, we, we've, uh, along with the, ar uh, the archaeological firm that was uh, helping us, we're staying away from public involvement at this time until things get better. So we're looking at next summer um, to unearth um, more artifacts from from the airfield. So um, the idea was that that um, or the plan is that those items will go on display. Will tell the story of the Air Force Base, and the, not only that, but the British Columbia Air Training Plan and aviation in the southwest part of Saskatchewan as well. For Swift Current Online, I'm David Zamet.